Jan Mad Yasya Yato Nivyad Itaratas Jarte Suavigya Swarat Tene Brahma Hudaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tejo Vari Medam Yata Vini Maya Yatra Chisargo Mesha Damna Swena Sada Nirasta Kuhakan Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes, of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of material nature, the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitravutra Paramo Nimatsranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Atravastu Shivadam Tapatrayon Mulanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kim Vapurer Ishwaraha Sadyohiti Avurudya Tetra Ite Bihi Susubistakshanat Completely reject all material, all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama Kalpataro Galitam Falam Sukumukad Amrita Dravya Samyatam. Bibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam Muhur Ahoraska Bhuvi Bhavukaha O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sisugadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although his nectar and juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidyantak Stohi Badrani 
Vidunati Srihit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies a devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta presu badresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the transcendental service, in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava, kamalu vadayas chete taranavidam, sitvam satve pratsidati. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vigyanam bhaktasanga sijayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidite hridaya grantis, Chidyante sarvasam saya, Siyante chasikarmani, Drista evat manishwari. Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the heart, not of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of samsayam samagam. Understanding the of the supreme absolute truth personality Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 16, Verse Number 3. I think so, yeah. Ajaharasva Midam's chin Gangayam Buridakshinam Sinan Saradvatam Gurum Pritva Deva Yatrak Shigur Chara Translation by Srila Prabhupada Maharaj Prikshit, after s having selected Kripacharya for guidance as a spiritual master, performed three horse sacrifices on the banks of the Ganges. These were executed with sufficient rewards for the attendants. And at these sacrifices, even the common man could see demigods. Hmm. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. It appears from this verse that interplanetary travel by the denizens of higher planets is easy. In many statements in Bhagavatam, we have observed that the demigods from heaven used to visit this earth to attend sacrifices performed by influential kings and emperors. Herein also we find that during the time of the horse sacrifice ceremony of Maharaj Pariksit, the demigods from other planets were visible even to the common man due to the sacrificial ceremony. 
The demigods are not generally visible to common men, as the Lord is not visible. But as the Lord, by his causeless mercy, descends to be visible to the common man, similarly the demigods also become visible to the common man by their own grace. Although celestial beings are not visible to the naked eyes of the inhabitants of the earth, it was due to the influence of Maharaja Pariksit that the demigods also agreed to be visible. The kings used to spend lavishly during such sacrifices as a cloud distributes rain. A cloud is nothing but another form of water, or in other words, the waters of the earth transform into clouds. Similarly, the charity made by the kings in such sacrifices are but another form of the taxes collected from the citizens. But as the rains fall down very lavishly and appear to be more than necessary, the charity made by such kings also seems to be more than what the citizens need, than, than what the citizen needs. Satisfied citizens will never organize agitation against the king, and thus there is no need in changing the monarchical state. Even for a king like Maharaj Brikshit, there was need of a spiritual master for guidance. Without such guidance, one cannot make progress in spiritual life. The spiritual master must be bona fide, and one who wants to have self-realization must approach and take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master to achieve real success. Srila Prabhupada Patita Bhavani Ki Jai Bodo Primanandi Haribo Well, it's very interesting that uh, Maharaj Pariksha chose Kripacharya as his guide or guru. And I'm just looking up something now. Uh, let's see. Kripacharya. We are. Okay. I don't have it. Anyway. Uh, I'm not sure. I think Kripacharya fought against the Pandavas. Yeah. So, but yet he's choosing him as his guru, which is very, very interesting. Uh, it just shows that sometimes situations are such that one must follow, follow uh, strictly duty uh, due to different considerations. But there is no rancor or, or, or uh, let's say, vengeance. Even though the, the Pandavas lost, Kripacharya was on their side. Still, all is forgotten and, uh, it, and, and forgiven. Why? Because there are certain situations where people have to act out of duty. Just like this Mapita Bhamha, he's, he's a Mahajan, he's a pure devotee of uh, Krishna, but yet out of duty he was obliged to support Duryodhana. Uh, but that didn't stop him from glorifying Lord Krishna and being able to see the Lord at the moment of death. And again we have Kripacharya who is <laughs> also fighting against the Pandavas, but yet uh, all is forgotten and forgiven and Maharaj breaks it accepts him as his guru. So, it's very significant that even for a king like Maharaj Brikshit, there was need of a spiritual master for guidance. Without such guidance, one cannot make progress in spiritual life. The spiritual master must be bona fide, and one who wants to have self-realization must approach and take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master to achieve Real success. Tat vidi paripratena paripratena sevaya. Upadeksami te gyanam gyaninas tatvadarsinaha. This is the spiritual master's tatvadarsi. He can see the truth and he follows the truth. He has also has spiritual master. So in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, 
for chapter 34th verse, this most important instruction is given by Krishna to Arjuna. And in the purport, Prabhupada says that one must pass the test of the spiritual master. He says, uh, satisfaction of the self-realized spiritual master is the secret of advancement in spiritual life. Inquiries and submission constitute the proper combination for spiritual understanding. Unless there is submission and service inquiries from the learned spiritual master, uh, unless there is submission and service, inquiries from the learned spiritual master will not be effective. One must be able to pass the test of the spiritual master, and when he sees the genuine desire of the disciple, he automatically blesses the disciple with genuine spiritual understanding. In this verse, both blind following and absurd inquiries are condemned. Not only should one hear submissively from the spiritual master, but one must also get a clear understanding from him in submission and service and inquiries. Therefore, when the student is submissive and is always ready to render service, the reciprocation of knowledge and inquiries becomes perfect. So here we have the formula for successfully, uh, let's say, relating to the spiritual master and receiving instructions. So there must be pranipat, pranipasneva, and sevaya. There must be submissiveness, there must be important questions asked, and there must be service rendered. Or as Prabhupada says, uh, one must also get a clear understanding from him in submission, service, and inquiries. So uh, that is the spiritual process that is recommended by Krishna himself to Arjuna exemplified by Arjuna, practiced by all the bona fide Vaishnava Acharyas, and also experienced by us through Srila Prabhupada. Another important point here that Maharaj Pariksit not only was able to invite the demigods and they came, and because of Maharaj Pariksit's sincerity, they were also manifest to the common people. This is extraordinary. We have so many people nowadays that are so, so interested in uh, uh, UFOs, unidentified flying objects, <laughs> and uh, extraterrestrials visiting the Earth, you know. But it's all, you know, indefinite not actually proven, although some people claim they've seen and so forth. Uh, but there was a regular occurrence of demigods visiting the earth when there were pious kings on the earth who performed sacrifices for the welfare of everyone. And this happened not so long ago, 5,000 years, a little less than 5,000 years ago, in the case of Maharaj Pariksit. So, and at that time, uh, there was a tremendous amount of charity given by the kings and, and sacrifices. Uh, so Prabhupada says, similarly, the charity made by the kings in such sacrifices are but another form of the taxes collected from the citizens. Yeah, well, how did the kings get the uh, money to distribute in charity? or the goods that distribute in charity, they're, they're taxing the people. And the tax was a, was a flat tax, 25% of your profit. And if you didn't make any profit, there was no tax. So it was not a uh, progressive tax as we have here in America. It means that the, the amount that you pay normally increases the more you make. Of course, the tax code is so complicated that you have to have a tax consultant to help you because it's too complicated and very, very nuanced. 
And then very rich people, they find so many ways of reducing their taxes uh, with uh, different uh, laws that are in the tax code. The tax code is a gigantic, gigantic book. You can't even carry it so heavy. Right? And they keep adding more rules and regulations every year. But a flat tax is very simple. You know, you, you, you count how much uh, money you brought in, how many expenses you had, including salaries and whatever, and whatever is left over is your profit. And then you take 25% of that profit, you send it to the government. Very simple. You can do it on a postcard. You, know, you don't need a tax consultant. But, uh, and, and then what did the kings do with the money? They performed great sacrifices in which they gave it back. Or at least they, they gave it to the needy people, the ones who were, were not uh, wealthy Vaishyas. And uh, the Brahmanas, they received uh, the charity, but they gave it away because they, were, they had vows of poverty and, and they were not interested in collecting more than they needed. And what they needed was very minimal. They lived very strict or, uh, uh, lives. That means that the poor people were always helped, uh, or the sudras and were always helped. And therefore, there was no agitation. Satisfied citizens will never organize agitation against the king, and thus there was no need in changing the monarchical state. So if you have a good leader, you don't have to change him. If it's not broken, you don't have to fix it. <clears throat> so how do you have good leaders? They have to be Rajarsis. They have to be saintly kings. And, and then they have to follow the rules and regulations of Vedic uh, life and principles and always be instructed by bona fide gurus. And like that, it's not, it's not a complicated thing if everyone follows the rules. Uh, it's only when they break the rules that things become very, very complicated. So these are a few points about this purport. Are there any questions anyone would like to ask? Haribo, no questions. All glories to Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Not